Hello everybody, welcome to the Personal Excellence Web Lecture. I'm Celeste, and today's topic is about the 80-20 principle. How to achieve more with less in life using the 80-20 principle. Now, the 80-20 principle is something which I myself really embrace and uh, use in life, and I found it to be extremely useful and helpful in living a more fulfilling and more accomplished life. And I really just want to share with you this principle because I truly think that uh, when someone applies it, applies this principle in its truest form, the person will see great transformations and great changes in his or her life. And even for myself, even though I've been applying this principle since um, several years ago, today, I continue to see new opportunities for me to apply it um, to make my life better. So in a way, there is never an end to the AE 20 year principle because um, what, whenever you apply it, there's always room and opportunity and more areas for you to apply it further. So um, just to give some quick background about my exposure to the AD 20 principle, I first knew about it when I was in university and at that time I was studying business. So the AD 20 principle was talked about in the context of uh, management business. And when I started my work, um, working in the corporate world, again, the 80-20 principle came up. And at the time, it was talked about in the context of personal productivity, efficiency. And several years ago, uh, after I quit my job to pursue my passion, I then read about the 80-20 principle, but now in the context of personal development. And I thought it was really interesting when I read the book by Richard Koch, which is about the 80-20 principle, and he talked about applying it in the area of life, um, in the area of personal goals, and other areas like relationships, habits, career, and so on. And for the most part, a lot of the things that he talked about, I already knew, but it was refreshing to read about it uh, written in such a context, and I definitely learned quite a fair bit from uh, reading the book. And after that, I wrote the 80-20 principle series on PE, um, which you can read at personalexcellence.co slash blog slash the number 8080-20, which is 20. So 80-20. And here you can access the three-part series which I wrote about the 80-20 principle. So today's web lecture will be based on that series. And once again, the web lecture is just meant to the supplementary to the article series. So do read the series on the website for more information. Okay, so I have already talked about the 80-20 principle a lot in this like first three minutes, but I have not really explained what it's about. So some of you are probably wondering, okay, so what is this 80-20 principle thing? Like it sounds so mysterious and elusive. Okay, so let me give you uh, a quick explanation of what the 80-20 principle means or what it's about. I believe it first started off uh, with this economist um, who was actually looking at wealth distribution throughout the world. And he actually found a trend when he looked at the, the wealth um, between like all the individuals and other countries and so on. He found that um, the 20% of the people in the world actually have 80% of the wealth of the money in the world. And this is where the 80-20 uh, principle then came in, uh, which is that 20% of the causes is usually associated with 80% of the output, the effects. And what's funny is that um, this 80-20 principle actually doesn't just apply to economics. If you really look outside in your life today, this 80-20 principle actually applies to everything. Um, just say, for example, your wardrobe. You have several clothes in your wardrobe, and I'm sure some of them are home clothes, some of them are um, outdoor clothes, some of them are work clothes, and so on and so forth. So let's say, out of the 100% of the clothes in your wardrobe, it is probably true that 20% of those clothes are the clothes that you wear 80% of the time. Now, the 80-20 number isn't meant to be absolutes. Uh, what it really serves is a directional reference that, um, which is supposed to represent that a small percentage of the causes is always 
linked to a large percentage of the effects. And this rule basically applies to everything. So like I was saying, the wardrobe example, um, other things. Okay, let's say crime rate. Uh, if we look at 100% of the crimes in the world, we'll find that probably a small percentage, maybe 20% of the criminals actually are responsible for 80% of the crimes. Now, another example, let's say population. If we look at the number of people in the world, there's about 7 billion people in the world today. Okay, chances are only 20% of the countries in the world are responsible or have 80% of the population. And of course, like uh, places like India and China will come to mind, which have um, over 1 billion people each. So, and, and you can see this trend with other, other things too. Twitter, social media um, site. I'm sure that a few top percent of the users using Twitter are responsible uh, or have over 80% of the followers there. And you can think of people like, say, Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber, and many of the pop celebrity idols who have just one person alone, them, have so many followers, like millions of followers. And I can go on and on and on, but the, the, essentially, the 80-20 principle can be observed and seen in uh, the various areas of our life. Not just um, in business, not just in the corporate world, but also in our lives, in our relationship, in our personal productivity, in um, the kind of output that we generate with the work that we do, in our habits, with our emotions, uh, whereby 20% uh, of the thoughts that we have actually contribute to the 80% improvement in our well-being, and so on and so forth. So, you know, the fact that the 80-20 principle is actually so true to every single thing that we do in life means that we should actually pay attention to this principle and to the 20% of the things that matter and then actually focus on them so that we can get even more effects. Because you see, if 20% of the things that you do contributes to 80% of the output, what it actually means is that we should not put so much time or energy to the other 80% of um, the causes or the input. What it means is that it's not a one-to-one -one equation. Like, um, just because you spend all your energy on 100% of the input doesn't mean that every single percent leads to that 1% of increment. So when you channel all your energy into the things that matter, you will end up with a bigger effect, a bigger output. Versus if you approach things with a diffused, um, in a diffused manner, with a diffused effort, trying to do everything together, but really accomplishing none in the process or mastering nothing in the process. So here's a simple um, chart that I created or more like a, a bar, two bars um, that shows what the 80-20 principle is about. And here you can see that 20% of the causes really leads to 80% of the results and 80% of the causes leads to 20% of the results, which tells you it is not a one-to-one -one equation. And hence, we should not approach every single thing with equal effort. We should give a disproportionate amount of energy to the things that matter. Okay, so Richard Koch said in the Living the 80-20 Way, the book, that there's really two big things that comes out of the 80-20 rule, and I definitely agree with them. Um, the first thing is that the 80-20 principle tells us uh, that we must focus because that only 20% of the things matter at the end of the day and because of that it is pertinent that we focus on these 20% of things that matter trying to focus or, or, or you know put your energy and try to do everything is meaningless it doesn't mean that you shouldn't do the other 80% of things but it tells you it suggests that you should allocate your energy in a more strategic manner. So I think some people are quick to sign up the 80-20 principle saying that, oh, everything is important, I must do everything, and so on and so forth. But these are the exact same people who always get burned out, stressed out, always have too many things on their plate. They are unable to manage their time properly. They are unable to get the things that they want to do done because they try to do every single thing. 
And the, the very important thing we must recognize here is that we don't have to do every single thing. It is important that we prioritize, that we focus on what matters to us. So the first thing that the 80-20 principle tells us is focus. The second thing that the 80-20 principle tells us is really progress. That when we focus on those 20%, that is when we make serious, serious progress. And um, this is actually something which I talked about in the my recent article on the superstar effect. And you can access it at personalexcellence.co slash blog slash superstar that's super and star as one word dash effect. The superstar effect is the phenomenon whereby um, there's always a winner take all effect that can be observed in each industry. So if you see industries like say um, the music industry, you see like right now the people who are always topping the charts and basically earning the most money um, among all the musicians and all the singers would be Lady Gaga, Justin Bieber. And then um, if you look at, say, in the area of golf, in the past it used to be Tiger Woods. And then, um, say, in the area of acting, you have the top earning actress and actors like um, Jennifer Aniston, uh, Josh Clooney, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, and so on and so forth. So this tells you that you should actually focus on being the top in what you do rather than trying to do three to four things and really making little to okay progress in them because the second path is not going to help you achieve your results as fast as the first path where you just focus on one thing and do it all. And the funny thing is, when you actually focus on that one thing and do it all, that success that you get actually provides a platform for you to subsequently achieve success in all the other things that you do, but in a much shorter period of time. And this is known as what I call the superstar halo effect. So the reason why I'm talking about a superstar effect and the superstar halo effect right now is because it is totally in line with the 80-20 principle. It is all about focus. And when you focus, you will then achieve progress. So remember these two things, which is very important. The first is 80-20 principle is about focusing, understanding that less is more. The second thing is that you must I understand that when you work on those few things that you focus on, you will now achieve progress. You will achieve more with less, as counterintuitive as it may seem, but it is definitely true. So, having explained um, the 80-20 principle and what it is about, now, for the second half of this book lecture, I'm going to share how to apply the 80-20 rule to your life. And the 80-20 rule can really be um, applied in three simple steps. And I'll talk about each of these steps now. Now, the first step to apply the 80-20 rule um, is really to identify your 80-20 destination, i.e. your 80-20 goals, what truly matters to you. Now, I think that um, a lot of us maybe have like a huge power of like goals and dreams. And um, we're currently doing the Live a Better Life in 30 Days live run for July right now. And we just did day three, which is about creating um, the life map and setting all the goals for five years, three years, and one year. And everyone has like a huge power of goals, which is awesome, which is great, because we should set as many goals as we want in life. Now, having set those goals, it is now about really identifying the 20% key goals in that whole list that will ultimately just change our life around when we accomplish them. And then um, from there, work your way to the other goals. But really, at any point in time, you should always focus on those 20% goals that matters most to you. So for you, like what are your goals in life? What are your dreams? Write all of them down. And in this whole list, what are the 20% goals that matters the most to you? They will give you the 80% fulfillment when they're accomplished. These are your 20% goals. So for myself, 
my 20% goals um, from the past was always to pursue my passion, live my purpose, set up my business in personal development. And this is why I picked that as the number one key goal to focus on. Like when I quit my job, it was just this, um, that was my priority. And then when that was accomplished, that brought me so much joy. It also gave me the foundation to do many other things. Like with the business set up, like um, the revenue was coming in, I have passive streams of income. I can work anywhere in the world. Like it just gave me so much liberty. And it gave me the freedom to pursue my other goals, which are the, now the new 20% goals uh, in my life that gave me the 80% fulfillment. Say, improving on my health, my fitness, socializing, meeting new friends, and so on and so forth. But it all started um, with me focusing on my initial 20% goal, which was pursuing my passion and living my purpose. And then after that was accomplished, I then worked on my new 20% goal, which was health, fitness, uh, meeting new friends, and so on and so forth. So walking away from there, when I say choose your 20% goals, I'm not talking about giving up the other 80% goals. I'm saying about prioritizing, um, setting an order, and then following that structure. Because if you think about it, let's say you have a bottle, and this bottle has a very narrow neck. And let's say you have five marbles. Would you be able to squeeze all the five marbles into the bottle? No, you won't. They will just get congested in the neck, or they'll just you know pop out like they won't even um be go into the bottle itself, and it's the same here when you're just trying to do too many things um it is not going to serve you, but rather if you do things one at a time, get everything in place, and really just use the approach of um not slow and steady but being steady and swift, then you will ultimately achieve everything. In fact, the people who do achieve everything that they want, they do so not because they try to achieve everything at once, but because they have a certain structure and regimented order in which they approach things. And this strategic approach helps them to be very, very efficient and very, very productive. So identify your 80-20 destination and identify what truly matters to you. Now, the second step of applying the 80-20 rule to your life is to identify your 80-20 route, which is the most effective path to your destination. So you have already in the first step identified the 20% goals that, that will bring you the 80% fulfillment in your life. And having identified that, um, every single goal that you pick also has its own set of um, paths that you can use to achieve the goal. So for example, um, with my business, uh, when I first started, there could be like 1 million ways that I could um, do the things that I could take to grow the traffic, to grow the presence. And then it was really about um, picking the 80-20 route, the most effective path for me to grow the business. And likewise for you, whatever goal you pick, um, be it setting up a restaurant, be it um, setting up an online business, be it creating a games company, be it creating a toys company, and so on and so forth. For whatever goal it is, there are many, many different routes that you can take to achieve that. And you should definitely pick the 80-20 route. So here you can see the more with less chart. And for those of you who are listening to this via the podcast, the more with less chart is basically a chart with four quadrants and the two axes, um, of which the Y axis, the vertical axis, refers to the effort, and the horizontal axis, which is the X axis, refers to the reward. And the more with less chart basically um, is a chart to tell you that for every goal, there are usually four main routes that you can take to achieve the goal. The first route is a route that requires low effort, but it gives you low reward. The second route you can take is a route that requires high effort, but it gives you low reward. The third route you can take is a route that requires high effort and it gives you high reward. And last but not least, the fourth route you can take is a route that requires low effort and it gives you high reward. And this is the 
80-20 route, um, the route that gives you more with less actions. And this is the most attractive route of all because with the least effort, you can get the maximum reward. So um, if I give you the example of say, let's say you're the study for an exam, okay? Your objective is, is obviously to score very well. Now, there are four possible routes that you have in this scenario, okay? The first route is the low effort, low reward um, task, whereby you don't study until the very last minute. So let's say your, your exam is next Monday. You have not studied yet, you don't know what's going on, and then you decided that, okay, I'm going to study on Sunday, okay? Low effort, low reward. Just because you only took a few hours to study, you're not able to digest the information, and then in the end, you don't perform during the examination. Now, the second path here is the high effort, low reward. Okay, so here, you attend all the lectures for the class. Okay, you do all the assignments, but you don't even um, pay much attention to the questions. You just do them in a haphazard manner. And then when you submit the assignments and um, the teachers turn them to you, you get the answers wrong, but you don't check them. You don't understand where you, you got wrong. So it's like you just did them for no reason. And then come exam day, um, you cram, you try to cram and study, but you don't study in a smart manner. And in the end, you don't score well. So this is definitely a high effort, low reward scenario. Because you study, but you don't pay attention. You do the work, but you don't check where you gone wrong. So it's just like you didn't do anything at all. And, and it's, so in the end, your results could be no different from the person in the first scenario who studied in the last minute. And then you have the third route, which is the high effort, high reward um, path. And this is the path which most students take in that they attend all lectures and tutorials, they study every day, they practice as many math sums uh, as possible if it's a math exam, and they memorize the solutions, the answers. So this is sort of like a route memorization, a route learning method. We just um, cram everything in your brain and uh, whatever comes out during the examinations, you will be able to solve them. It gives you the results that you want, but it might not be the most effective way to um, spend your energy. I mean, if um, the only goal you have in life is just a math exam, then it will work out fine. But what if you are in a scenario where you have six, seven other subjects to, to score for? And or let's say on top of studying, you are actually um, helping your parents with their business. Uh, you're actually working part-time in another job. Um, you actually have other things going on in life, say uh, recreational activities, extracurricular activities in the school. So in, in that kind of scenario, this wouldn't work out because it simply requires too much effort. And um, chances are there are other things in your life where you need to put that effort in. And then here we have the fourth route, which is the low effort, high reward route. And in this route, here you attend the key lectures and tutorials. You understand the key principles of the topics. And then you identify the likely questions that will be tested in the exams by examining past trends in last year's exams and talking to professors. So here, you don't spend a lot of effort, or at least not as much effort as the person in the third route, in the third scenario does, but you're able to achieve the same results, if not more. And why is that? That's because you took the strategic route. You were strategic in how you approach the problem, and then you identified the path with the least resistance, the least effort, and you took that path. And because of that, even though you put a lesser effort, lesser input than a person in the third scenario, you're able to achieve the same results, if not more. And these four um, routes or scenarios that I just shared with you, they are actually there in every single goal that we achieve. Um, in every single goal that we have, there is always um, a low effort, low reward path, a high effort, low reward path, a high effort, high reward path, and a low effort, high reward path. And I think all of us should always endeavor to go for the low effort, high reward path. And because by focusing our efforts on the routes that will bring us the most output, we can then use the other uh, energy that we have to work on the other goals the other sub-goals, or to achieve even more results for that same goal. 
So in order to identify what that low effort, high reward path is your goal, it is important that you understand that goal thoroughly. Um, it is also important that you study past trends, that you talk to the people who have achieved this goal before, that you understand from them what are their success drivers, and so on and so forth. And all these things combined will help you identify um, this low effort, high reward path. Identifying the low effort, high reward path is very much in line with step two of ASPER, uh, which is strategy. And ASPER is my personal framework for successful goal achievement, which I talk about on PE and which I have a web lecture on as well. So if you're interested to um, listen to it, you can find it on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Celestine Chua, and look for the lecture that is about how to achieve your goals with success. And there you can find the ASPER goal achievement framework. So step two, which is about strategy, is really about understanding your goal and identifying that way um, that will help you to achieve the most results in the least amount of time. So remember here, our objective is to be strategic in our approach at all times and um, not really uh, going for the path that requires all our energy, but going for the path where we apply the least energy to get the maximum reward, such that we can achieve even more results in um, this same area, if not other areas of our life. Okay, the last but not least, the third step to applying the 80-20 rule to our life is to identify your 80-20 action steps, and this would be the most effective execution of your route. So you have already identified the 80-20 goal, the 20% goals that gives you the most fulfillment. You have identified the 80-20 route, the route that will give you the most results with the least effort. Now, it's about the 80-20 action steps. And the 80-20 action steps basically refers to the 20% actions that will make the most results, the most difference, and give you the most reward. So when I was building PE in the past, there were about a whole list of action steps that I could have taken to grow the site. And these action steps could include commenting on other people's blogs, posting in related forums um, that are related to the personal development niche, creating social bookmarking accounts and building those accounts such that um, the links that I share would get prominence and would um, get attention from other users writing quality content, networking with the bloggers so that um, they will link back to my articles, creating partnerships, posting in article directories such as e-zines, and so on and so forth. And um, as you can see, there were like an endless number of steps that could be done to grow the traffic. And the thing is, all these action steps, they don't necessarily give the same results. Like some are more effective than the others. And it's about identifying what are the effective action steps for me, for my site, for my industry, and really focusing on them. So um, to know what are the 20% action steps that matter, obviously requires that you have knowledge of uh, what works. In here, trial and error will be important. Uh, really experimenting, allowing yourself to try different things, and then from there, knowing what works. It is very important to do tracking as well. Because when you track your results, it then helps you to know um, what's bringing you results. And tracking is something which I talk about in the Esper series as well. Um, if you're interested to read the Esper series, it can be found in personalexcellence.co slash blog slash goal dash achievement. So there you can find a seven part Esper series. And tracking is um, something which I talk about in step five of Esper, which is about review. So always um, be open to trying new things and always to track your results because from there, you can then tell what are the action steps that matter, what are the action steps that give you more results over the other action steps. Okay, so basically what I have just shared in the past 15 minutes are the three key steps to apply in the 80-20 in your life. And to recap, these three steps are Firstly, to identify your 80-20 destination 
always know what are your 80-20 goals because these are the goals that matter. Never ever deviate from them. The second thing is to identify your 80-20 route. What is the route that will give you the maximum results with the least effort? Every single goal in life has the 80-20 route. It's up to you to identify that. The third step is to identify your 80-20 action. What is the most effective execution of your route? So there are like 1 zillion action steps you can take. But what are the 20% action steps that really makes the whole of the difference? So it's up to you to be uh, aware of that. It's up to you to track your results and to monitor accordingly and to know what are the action steps that make difference and then to take those action steps. So knowing this three step process um, will basically help you tremendously in life because when you keep focusing on the 20% high value stuff and just keep focusing on them, um, you'll find that your life will start changing dramatically. Like for the little effort that you put in, you will then get uh, more and more results, more and more results, even though um, you are working lesser than before. In fact, I think that this is the way that things should be. I just think that um, society has complicated a lot of things with technology advancing, with uh, new things coming out every time. I think that we are just surrounded by um, too much information. We are in this information overload era and uh, we now have this mentality that more is more and we should do more in order to get more results and that's not necessarily the truth. What's most important is that we really focus on the things that matter and focus on doing them well and when we do that, that's when we achieve even more results than ever before than in a scenario where we're working so hard but we're accomplishing nothing. For more on the 80-20 principle, visit uh, personalexcellence.co slash blog slash 80-20 and that's 80-20 the numbers, not the words, so 80-20. And there's a lot more information in this three-part series. So there I even talk about how you can apply the 80-20 principle in the other areas of your life such as your habits, your thoughts, your emotions, your health, your career, your relationships, your productivity and your day-to-day -day activities. Um, and there I also share examples of how I practice 80-20 um, in my life such as uh, in my habits, relationships and day-to-day -day activities. So bear in mind um, the 80-20 principle. If there's one thing that you should get out of the, today's web lecture, it is really about focusing, focusing on the 20% things that really matter. And remember that the 20, the number 20 here is just like a ballpark arbitrary figure. It is not like a abs like absolutely 20% of the things that you do are the most important things. But it is supposed to convey the idea that the small percentage of things actually mean the most and you don't need to do everything. So focus. And the second thing is that when you focus and you put your effort in these few things that matter, this is when you achieve progress, progress bigger than whatever that uh, you ever taught before. So thank you so much for listening. Subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash Celestine Chua. And um, I look forward to just seeing you guys in the next web lecture. Thanks, guys.